Hello and welcome to the second part of my tutorial on building a lamp in Blender. So picking up where we left off, we had just modeled this lamp over here, but now we need to actually texture it and light it so it doesn't look like this gray ugly thing. So before I actually get to texturing and lighting, I'm just going to do a couple of improvements to our model because uh, this is sort of a phase that's very important for every modeler. Uh, it's just to, just to check your model and check for some errors or things that you think are off. The first thing is the button. Uh, I think the button is too tall, so I'm just going to select these and just crank it down a bit. And actually I'm also going to add a loop cut and do this so that it looks a little bit flatter on its below. Uh, this next improvement and hopefully last is going to be to size just a tiny bit down this part of here so it looks um, better. Now I think it's appropriate. Now we can render now. So to render we are going to actually use cycles as I said which is over here. I was using on the render now changing to cycles just this but to use cycles you need uh, or to use or the newest blender version 2.61 or to get um, a new version from the graphical.org which is like the, uh, the blender versions that people um, actually compile and just create that are not official so to do that uh, you should go here and here's the actual blender.61 version um, it's pretty cool, uh, it includes the cycles render engine, the new motion tracking thing, the ocean simulation that I actually uh, got the chance to try and it's pretty cool, dynamic paint that I haven't tried yet but it looks cool, and a couple more add-ons and bug fixes and etc. And so the thing that we're looking at now today is the cycles render engine. Uh, if you want, you have the, it's wiki over here, it pretty much covers the basics of basics. It has not, doesn't have a lot of things yet, but if you try to plunge into this stuff, you probably will find something that's useful. Um, so, going back on our tutorial, let's just have a look on our finished looking um, uh, model. And here it is. Uh, I'm, this is my finished looking model. Um, as you can see, it has this soft, soft glowing here. It has a lamp, which uh, uh, sorry, a light bulb, which we're going to talk about later. It has some soft uh, shadows over here. I didn't want to make like a huge, um, a huge shadow because I tried to make this sort of like um, a student environment instead of a natural environment. And uh, this was our, this the old tutorial, the uh, part one render, and this is the part two, which I think it's more or less cool. Um, bear in mind that my computer isn't very good, and so you can see some noise over here, and that's because um, it's not very fast to render, and so I didn't actually care about taking care of that because it would take forever. Uh, so to I'm going to I'm going to talk about cycles and to you. Um, Run their options like if you haven't ever uh, heard about cycles. If you have, um, this is going to be a little bit boring for you, although it's still cool to um, actually texture this. So, to start with, we're going to add a new material. And to this material, we're going to call light. Oh, sorry. Not light, lamp. Okay. Uh, just something, uh, very, uh, because my computer is so slow, as I said. Uh, when we actually render this in cycles, I'm not going to wait for the render process. I'm just going to pause the recording and skip to the end of the render. Uh, so now we need to uh, color this. So first of all, we have to select the type. This is the shader types. So you have background, diffuse, glossy, glass, trans translucent, transparent, etc. For now, I'm going to use glossy. As you can guess, it's something that's glossy. You have three types. We're going to just use Pac-Man, the default one. Now, the color, we need to select a dark grayish color or a little black color like we have on our um, the, the render I just showed you. And finally, the roughness, we need to actually pump this up a bit because if you just leave it at zero, it will look too glossy and it will look bad. And then, you'll just select the same material to all these elements that we've created to the button as well and to the top part of the button. Okay, next 
I'm not gonna render it for now, uh, we'll render it in a minute because we need some lighting for before. But n before we do actually the lightning, we just can add a plane. This will be wait, sorry. When this happens, just click Shift C just to reset our cursor over there and then add our plane. This is gonna be our ground. And actually before we start building our ground, we need actually something else, um, which is to position the camera because this camera is here but it's looking boringly over the, the lamp. It's not that bad, but we we want a little more um, handling and precision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an MT over here. And then I'm going to click the camera and I'm going to go here into the constraints panel and add a constraint called track 2. And then I'm going to select empty. And you immediately see that the camera gets all off track. And if you check it, you see that this is happening. So you need to first select Y as your up axis because um, you want to flip this thing. And then if it, you just leave it like that, you're going to get a nice result. And as you can see now, if you select the camera, it's pointing right at the empty. And wait, it's not working. What's happening? Oh, I think you have to select that. Okay, minus Z, Z. So if you actually move the camera, it will be always pointing at that empty. And this means that even if you move the empty, it will be pointing at that. So position the empty more or less over there. And if you just like posi reposition the camera. Oh, sorry. Let's go front view view and perspective orthogonal and just find a nice location perhaps a little bit higher and in top view do the same but there okay this means that if you want to do some sort of animation or something you can easily set it up just creating a, a, um, a keyframe over here and then just overing it around it and then creating another keyframe pretty simple but we're not going to do that today maybe next or you can just do it for yourself. Okay, now our ground plane, I'm just going to scale it a bit. And then as I said, I tried to create a studio environment. So to create that studio environment, we actually need a background curve. A background curve, um, it's just to blend out these sharp edges that we will find um, over in the, the ends of the plane. So here, we don't want any of these and we don't want any of that background. So to correct that, I'm going to do a cool technique like the actual um, the actual studio for, for, for photographers do which is to have like a background pane and let's just do that by subdividing, the, subdividing this a bit and then select uh, that select click O to um, make on the proportional editing enabled um, select um, let's say a smooth, yeah, smooth proportional editing. And now go to view, front, and just click J, Z. And then if you just move your mouse wheel, you see that the influence will change. And you can, let's change from linear to sphere, Seth. And no, actually, let's try root, probably is the best one. Yeah, root is the best one. And uh, or even better, I think we need to try sharp. Yeah, sharp is the best one. If you do this, then like J Z, and you create this surface, it look awful from here, as you can see. But if you go to the camera view, and then actually do a similar thing over there, over there, over there, over there and over there, gonna get this awful surface, might look, click again O to disenable and then and so you get this result. Now if you add, no not a constraint, if you add a modifier called subdivision sur surface as we did on the first part for two dollar and smooth it, gonna get this result which is sort of a blended background as you can see this is our blended background and to our camera and in the final render will look like it's sort of like a nothing it's just a, a 
the, whatever color we give it. And so we can actually color it using a material, at new and call it BG or something. Uh, yeah, the fuse can work and just make it slightly bluish. Or, yeah, slightly bluish. Yeah, that's probably it. I'll le just leave the default, the rest of the defaults on. And uh, now, to create our actual lighting, because even though you have, you have uh, indirect lighting and environment lighting and all of those things with cycles, you do want to create an, an extra lighting, in, at least in this case, and for that, just going to create a plane, and this will work like a, an area light, and so if you add a new material, and you call it light, and then just change the the surface to from the to of the material from the fuse to emission it will actually emit light and you can actually tone turn slightly bluish and the strength dot six uh, now uh, you should uh, do uh, some okay now we will do another thing which is you have this this okay, that can be your final render though you can actually improve a couple of things let me just delete this light which is a little bit useless and even though you have your final result we can add for example a light bulb we will not model the actual light bulb because it takes some effort and it's not worth it well I could but it's not uh, I don't have enough time to do that so you can like go to so a website like Blender Cookie, which has a, a nice tutorial building a light bulb, and you can just add it here. Uh, I'm just gonna fake it. There's a problem, and if you checked my image from a while ago, uh, which uh, I closed, sorry, and you could see that the light was over here on the um, the lamp, but you couldn't see like um, a lot of light over here. Not uh, and you wouldn't neither. You'd see a uh, sort of um, like um, a halo light around this, like you would expect on like a lamp like this on a studio. The reason for that is that we would want to use something called um, volumetric light, which is exactly that halo effect that you see. However, because Cycles is so fresh and uh, because um, Cycles is has just been added to Blender, and I don't know any ways of doing that with Cycles. In the antique Blender render, I, I internal render, I knew, though in this Cycles render, I don't. And I don't think there is an actual uh, implementation of that. If you know something, just tell me. But for now, I don't think there is. Uh, probably, we'll probably add it later. So, we're just going to do the... Um, the standard light, which is by it's done by adding the a ball, a uh, UV sphere, like this, and position it. Uh, you can do like for by a top view, Z to wireframe mode, and so that you can get really into the thing, and you can place it wherever you want. Actually, scale it a bit upwards. Front view, you can. Oops, sorry you can actually move it upwards a bit again and then on our camera to see if it's actually seeable and just reposition it a bit like that is okay smooth it and then add a new material call it a light bulb and again emission just yellow pure yellow and turn it down for like about five probably and okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, we could do a couple of more things. I don't think they are necessary. Let's just give it a try. You just go to viewport shading over here and click render it while you are cycles render enabled. So I'm just going to do that. And as I said, I'm going to pause the recording and the intense rendering. I'm going to show it to you. So this is pretty much the final result. And I'm not actually rendering it. I'm just making a um, temporary render. Uh, in my uh, viewport, so I could actually pan around the, the our lights using the normal controls on the 3D view. Though, because as I said, the computer might be just so slow. If I do so, it is going to be very, very slow. If you have a nice computer, you can try it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, it will take a while to render. You're going to see this noise, and 
decreasing bit by bit. Though we're gonna actually make the final render. So for that, we're gonna go back to our solid view. Just gonna correct something, which is to actually make this a little bit closer like that. And now, and just moving that. Okay. Now I'm just gonna do something else before we end up, which is to have the interior of the the lamp head to be white instead of this glossy black that we had um, just created. So to do, s because it, this is actually something that a lot of people have been asking me, and to do so we're gonna have to do something first, which is going to the modifier panel and the solidify modifier that we created, apply it. So this means that now we have the actual structure of the solidify. Um, that the solidify modifier added, but in actual vertices. So if you just select this, you can click click here to face face select. And if you select these faces over here, these inside faces, a couple of them, it's you just you don't need to select every face of the interior because you don't want to add it to every face. Just make your best to select. A couple of them, and oops, wrong one. Just correct it later. Okay, I think that's about it. Can see it very well. Probably here. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, to select this one, that one, and actually go to the outside. And deselect these faces, and <laughs> actually selected a lot from the outside. It's pretty much better. Okay, now I think it's just inside faces, missing couple. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And again, yeah, I selected the outside faces. And let's see if I can select the correct ones, which is this one, that one, yep. Okay, now with this, we're gonna go here to the, the material panel and gonna click this plus sign over here to add a new one, then click new, click write something like inside, and then click assign. And you can just leave the default settings over here because it's pretty much what we want. And now, if we actually run it again, let's but for now I'm gonna do something different which is this do before we actually do the render just set up a couple of our settings uh, the first one I'm just gonna change it to HDTV uh, 720p 100% okay in the integrator we can change the samples for tests just gonna click 5 of the render so it will look a lot noisy and it's just testing again yeah, gonna do the, the, the final samples will be much higher and then just click the, the the camera and here on the focal length just increase it a bit and just get it back again what this does is basically um, change the actual focal length of the camera so that the depending on the value objects will seem bigger or smaller because this is a close-up I think that looks better if we increase the focal length now we could actually do some pre uh, some post composing thing like uh, add some notes and create like a vignette and, the, and stuff, but I'm not going to do that for this tutorial, maybe in the next one, um, because uh, because we are running out of time and because it's not really necessary, because I'd like um, um, depth of field and etc, but I think I'm going to do that on the next tutorial. Uh, so just to wrap it up, just to a test render with a samples of 5, I'm going to render it. And here it is. As you can see, it's pretty noisy. It took 35 seconds to render all these, so as I said, my computer is pretty slow. Though, you can see that the result is pretty much this, so we can increase the samples to 30 or more. I, I have the, I've done renders with 100 and actually more, but now 30, I think it's enough. I, it's, it was what I did on my final render for the actual lamp. So click image, and here we are, go. And so here's the final result. It took me 2 minutes and 33 seconds to render this. I hope you enjoyed this two-part tutorial on modeling a lamp and render it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. i see you in my next tutorial. If you have any suggestions for it, please leave it in the comments or send me an email. Bye.